Hey guys, today I'm going to be going over the process in programming a unit in Bearcat VC125 AT scanner. So first off, you're going to need a, uh, well, I'm going to show you how to do it with software, not directly on the scanner itself. So you'll need the software, I'll put a link to that in the description. Uh, you'll need the scanner itself and you'll need this cable which comes in the box. So uh, anyway, let's get to it. Alright, so at your computer you'll take this cable plug it into a USB port like so and then the other end of this will go into the scanner and when you first plug this in it's going to say something like charge on the screen charging there you go so you'll have to turn it on in order for this to actually work all right and it pops up all that stuff and I'll go ahead and just mute that so we don't have to listen to it but we'll just set that somewhere out of the way and I'll move over to the screen capture software. Alright, so a quick Google search of Unit NBC 125AT software brings up this page. Uh, so this will be pretty simple. You'll just download that file, unzip it, and install it just like you would any other program. And you'll end up with this BC 125AT underscore SS software on your desktop here. Now, uh, first off, we're going to go up to Tools and COM Port Settings, and uh, if you only have that one thing that has a COM port on it plugged into the, your computer, for example, right now all I have is that scanner, uh, there's only going to be one COM port that you can actually select there, so COM11, say OK on that. Now, I've already partially programmed this scanner, so if I click, uh, I think it's this button, uh, the read from scanner button, it'll actually pull the data that's on the scanner and bring it back onto uh, the software here. So, uh, anyway, I've got bank one set up here. These are um, uh, Union Pacific Railroad uh, frequencies here. So, anyway, we're going to go over to bank two and start programming this one. And usually the way that I find my uh, my frequencies here, so the last time I did this, I looked up railroad frequencies in Nebraska, since I live in the state of Nebraska. Come on, there we go. And radio.reference.net is the one that I'm looking at here. And then they just list out everything here. So uh, BNSF are actually the ones that I'm going to use here. And you'll notice this also gives you the alpha tag. And this uh, scanner has the ability to put the tags there where it says name. Uh, you notice right now these are all red. They're only red because they're set at 0 0.000 on the frequency. So that automatically locks them out. Uh, but anyway, what we're going to do is just start uh, copying the frequency and the tag over into the software. This is actually pretty simple. And you can just copy paste the frequencies like so. And the alpha tag is what I've been using on the naming. And sometimes it pops up with that kind of an error. Um, it, it says it failed, but it comes up anyway. Uh, so I don't think it really matters. Uh, one thing of note here is it will actually allow you to put in two of the same frequencies. Um, or last time I checked it would, so... Oops, I wanted numbers there. Yeah, so one thing of note, it will actually let you put the same frequency in here twice. So you might want to be careful with that. Uh, and if you want to delete a channel, you can just set it to 0, 0.000, and it will automatically lock that out. So anyway, I'm just going to go down this line, uh, continuously, or just continue to copy-paste um, the alpha tags and the frequencies. So here's a bit of an example of uh, having two of the same frequencies with two different tags. 
Uh, so have what's known as the Gilter, the Giltner subdivision here, which is 26 miles there, and then there's a Hastings subdivision. Uh, but they've got the same frequency here, and it sh I think it'll actually let me copy that in there. Obviously, there's no point there. Uh, but since there's more channels in this Hastings sub, we're going to go ahead and use that. So it doesn't particularly matter. I think we actually already have a, uh, these two channels in here as well, unfortunately. So, yeah, right up on top is showing our corn. I might just take those as the BNSF ones instead of... Uh, You'll notice the channel numbers are actually the same. I'll take the Hastings ones instead of the other ones. It doesn't really matter. If you go through here and you make changes to it, you have to come back through here and turn off the lockouts, which is kind of a pain because you have to click on every single one of these about four times before it actually pops open. Alright, so now what I'm going to do that I have all these set up. I'm going to go ahead and save it. And I've got this just called scanner config already. Um, but anyhow, uh, it is good to save it. That way there you can open that file and not have to read it from the scanner. Um, and also just have a backup. So now I have all that done. Um, I'm pretty happy with the, uh, the frequencies that I have programmed in here. I don't think I have them repeated too many times at least. And I think I have all of them that are different. So I know I can click on right to scanner. Of course, the... Uh, these alpha tags will kind of depend on the area since some of these frequencies are repeated so many times. Uh, but after we say writing to scanner, and the scanner says remote mode keypad lock on it. Alright, so there we go. Finished writing the scanner. So anyway guys, that's a basic crash course in how to program your scanner. I mean, it's fairly simple. Uh, you've just got to copy-paste the frequencies into this column and put in whatever uh, bit of text you want to in this thing that says name. And I'll show you here in a second what that looks like. Um, but anyhow, uh, there's also some other stuff in here. We have uh, the close call setting. Um, and that's like if it picks up a really strong uh, radio signal, it will uh, automatically go into that. And I actually want to set this to uh, do not disturb mode anyway. And you can set the bands there. And also these show you the bands that this thing can handle. So there's all the frequency ranges. Um, very low frequency, civil air, uh, VHF high frequency. And I guess that's military air and then UHF uh, frequency. So that, those are all the frequencies that this thing covers. Uh, bank settings. And you can see you can enable and disable the different banks. So... And this is just by default uh, what it does as soon as you put it in, or as soon as you program it. You can turn the uh, banks on and off the keypad, of course. And there is the uh, all the different services that you can scan. And there's some other miscellaneous stuff. There's a backlight setting, always off, always on. Uh, on with key press, and yeah, there's different things you can do. Band plan, USA and Canada. Set the contrast of the LCD, um, the time that the batteries charge for. Uh, there's a chart in the manual that tells you what to set that to. Uh, key beep, key lock, or priority scan, weather alert priority, and volume and squelch. So, anyhow, that's the uh, sort of miscellaneous settings. There's also uh, custom search banks. You can set these just to search through a set of. Uh, frequencies and search option. Now you can also set modulation here um, and just leave all that stuff at auto and it'll figure it out on its own and there's a whole bunch of stuff in here. I really don't know what this actually is. 
haven't messed with it before. But uh, leaving that off seems to work just fine. So we're going to go ahead and write that to the scanner again, actually. Uh, and then I'll show you what this thing is doing, what it looks like. All right, so anyway, this is what that uh, tag looks like. You can see the alpha tag on the top there, and it shows the frequency as well. And the channel number is just the channel number that it is on the scanner. So we might be able to pick something up here. You see it just flicks between bank one and bank two there. And we may not really find anything. Apparently bank zero is enabled as well. Turn that off though. And that's what it looks like with the backlight on. Usually you just hook, yeah, by default you just push the uh, power button and it comes up with that. But it uh, doesn't look like we're actually going to find anything uh, useful to lock on to. But anyway, that's what it looks like. Uh, if I hit hold again, it should come up the random channel. There we go. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's a basic crash course in programming one of these uh, Unit MBC 125AT scanners. So uh, anyway, uh, that's it for now, guys. Bye.